YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and in this video I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game that we all watched between the Ravens and the Bills and, and what a game it was um this game like who, who said the Ravens can't play a complete game I don't know who said that because yesterday they would sure played a complete game because every side of football every phase of football both the coaching the personnel the players Everybody helped contribute to that loss. Everybody had their fair share. Um, but we're going to get into it. And, I mean, you know what? Let's just start because um, the, the hot topic uh, has been coaching. Like, what happened with coaching? What's going on with coaching? Why are we seeing a lot of the same issues that we've been seeing? Uh, not only this year, but for years. For years. Um, and it's situational coaching. Situational coaching is very important. Uh, starting with the, the fourth down. It's four minutes left in the game, um, and the Ravens decide, hey, you know what? We're going to go for it. They had a long drive. I want to say it was a 95-yard drive, but I, f I forget. Correct me if I'm wrong. But they had a long drive, so they, they get to the goal line. And they try to make it. They can't. Um, I think they gave J.K. Dobbins a handoff. He got stopped. Uh, Lamar, he did a scramble. Then uh, he, what was the other play? Was it a pass? What happened? I, I forgot what happened on the uh, the uh, the third play. Because I remember th three out of the four plays, but I don't remember that fourth play. But anyway, um, on fourth down, uh, they decided, you know what? We're going to go for it. And live, live, I'm watching it. I'm like, I was 50-50 on it. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, they, they, they probably should have took the points. But at the same time, I understand why they're going for it. I get it. You made it all this way. You don't want to come away with, with nothing. Um, so I was 50-50 on it. Uh, but my guy Lenny in real time, he texted me. He's like, why are they going for it? He's like, why are they going for it? Then I replied to him. I said, well, I said, I'm 50-50 on it. I could see both sides. But he was like, no, you take your points. Reason being, and he explained it in the most simple terms. That you take your points because if Bills get the ball back, then they can't beat you with a field goal. They can't beat you with a field goal. They have to, it has to be a touchdown. So and I was like, oh well, okay. Well that that make it makes too much sense. It, it literally made too much sense. It's like, oh okay, I get it. And my guy JT, he texts me too. He's like, in real time as well. He's like, why are they not taking the points? He said they need to take the points. They need to take their points. I was like, oh, well, yeah. And then they end up going for it. Um, and Lamar threw the interception. And see, this is where, this is how everybody helped contribute um, to, to different parts of this loss. Um, yeah, so looking back at it, for me, uh, they should have took their points. But for a lot of y'all, y'all were like, hey, in real time, a lot of y'all were like, take the points. They should have took the points. Um and yeah, they, they should have. And one of the things that stood out to me the most about why they should have taken the points um, is hindsight. Hindsight. Um, with a lot of things, a lot of things in, in life, you can um, think, man, oh man, I, I should have done it this way. I did it that way, but, but I, I should, looking back, I should have done it this way. And oh man, I, I could have had a lot more success at that. I could have been a lot better at that. But it's easy to do that in hindsight because you've already been through whatever the experience is, so you've learned from it. But not with the Ravens. Oh, no, 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 no. Not with the Ravens. Because hindsight, not, not just in this game, but hindsight is from even last year and years prior to that. In clutch situations where it's like, hey, take the points. Take your points. Last season, oh, man. Y'all know how frustrated I was over them two-point conversions last season. Ooh. And if you don't, if you weren't here, which is fine, I was very frustrated over them. In real time, with those, that wasn't even a hindsight thing for me. In real time, I was like, kick the field goal, just go to overtime, please. But Harbaugh, nope, we going for two. We want to go for two. We want to go for two. And I just, I, I did not agree with any of them, man. I, I really didn't. Um... But they, they went for it. They went for those two, and they, they didn't get them. They didn't get them. Um, and I, I just felt like it was just not a good, they weren't good decisions. 
Um, so it's like you figure, like, all right, Ravens, they went through this whole learning experience thing with a depleted team. So it's like, all right, with the healthy team, they will have learned their lesson from last year. But no, they they apparently uh, didn't. Um, now, with the play design itself, we're going forward. And that might not have been the best call, but with the play design itself, it was it was a well designed play. It really was. Um, it was designed to get Devin Duvernay open in the back of the end zone, and it did just that. Devin Duvernay was wide open in the back of the end zone, and I know everybody like, man, why didn't Lamar hit him? Why didn't Lamar throw to Duvernay when he was wide open? And Lamar, he got pressure. He got pressure. So that offensive line, while they, they were holding up, they were holding up a little bit, but then Lamar got pressure, and instead of stepping up, he started backpedaling. Now, my, my, my guy, he had pointed out, he's like, man, Lamar should have stepped up in the pocket because the pocket, they were, they were holding up well. But when I watched the replay, I, I didn't see that. Because to me, it looked like if Lamar would have stepped up in the pocket, it looked like he would have got crushed. It looked like the it, the pocket was just so small and just st it was so narrow and tiny that it to me it looked like he would have got crushed. But who knows? We'll never know. But Lamar, um, and that's one thing with Lamar when that pressure like really starts get to, and it's been getting to him, he can do a lot of the the, the backpedaling. And the backpedaling, hey, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Yesterday in that game and in, in that on that play. That's where it didn't. It wasn't working. So the offensive line, in my opinion, the blocking wasn't the best. The pressure was getting there. Then that pressure got to Lamar, started affecting him. So that made his decision making as far as his feet, footwork not the best. So he started backpedaling. And then he threw it late um, to Devin Duve because he saw Devin Duve and he was like, oh, hey, Duve, I see you. I got you. Threw to him, but he threw it too late. Jordan Poyer uh, had time to recover. And got his second pick of the his second pick of the game. His second pick on Lamar Jackson of the game. Um, and that set up the Bills to get a game winning drive. Um, so shout out to them. Shout out to their defense. Um, but then there was another coaching decision where again it is a it was a complete everybody played their part. Because on that drive where because uh, Ravens only had two timeouts because uh, the Ravens had lost a timeout earlier on in the second half when Lamar, um, he scrambled on a third and like eight. He scrambled and then put the ball over the first down marker. Everybody's like, oh, I'm like, all right, first down, first down. But the rest are like, nope, it was inches. He didn't get it over. I was thinking, what? Really? So Harbaugh challenged it. And I, I love that challenge. I had zero problem with that challenge because I'm like, Lamar clearly put the ball over the first down marker and then went out of bounds. But they said no. And then the Ravens lost that challenge. And I, I was just like, what? So then we, we, we got the refs. They contributed to the game, too. And we, we're going to talk about that. But let's finish the coaching first. Um, at, on the Bills, their game-winning drive. Um, the clock was getting down. Uh, oh, See, I, 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 can't, I, I can't just skip the refs because they had a little involvement too. Um, on that game winning drive, uh, there was a, uh, I forgot what down and distance it was, but well, great play design by um, Mike McDaniel, defensive coordinator for the Ravens, sent Brandon Stevens in on a blitz. Um, Brandon Stevens, Josh Allen got the ball away, it was incomplete, but Brandon Stevens hit him. Then they called roughing the passer. It was such a bad call. It, 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 it was such a bad call. It was a, ter it was a terrible call. Then they, they tried to justify it by saying, oh, there was contact to like the head and neck area. There was no contact to the head or neck area. It was neither. So that gave the Bills a free 15 yards. Um, there was on Mark Andrews. It was early in the game in the first half. Lamar Jackson hit Mark Andrews and Mark Andrews went down at the one yard line. Nice play. Great throw. Great catch. Great play. Ravens at the one. Flag. Flag. What's the flag? And they said it was offensive pass interference. And I'm thinking, uh oh, okay, Ravens must have ran a pick play to help Mark Andrews get open. They showed the replay. Mark Andrews tapped the, the defensive player on the chest. 
it wasn't even like a push off. It, he like tapped him on the ch- and I was like, wow. Like really? And that that was a game changer right there. That was such a game changing play. Or such a game changing officiating call. And then another another one. It's like, all right, if that's go, is that, if if y'all gonna call that uh, offensive pass interference, all right, be consistent. Be, because then there was another call where Ravens they had the ball again, and Lamar threw to I want to say Demarcus Robinson. I forgot who it was, but was it Jordan Poyer? I think it was Poyer, but whoever it was, the Bills defensive back. They clearly made contact with the receiver early before the ball got there. Clear. And there was no call. And I think that was on a third down. There was no call. And it was a clear pass in the fin- And I was like, wow. Hold up now. Come on now. Let, 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 the, let the players help determine the outcome. Not the refs. And while the refs, they, they didn't completely determine the outcome, they certainly uh, played their part. And it was, it was a very frustrating part of the game um, to see. Um, so, at that, with, with the referees and stuff, they, uh, there's some little okie doke stuff that happened with that. Um, but back to coaching. Because, again, I, I, I tried to save the rest for a little bit later, but I couldn't get to where I was getting without talking about the rest. But anyway, um, back to coaching. Now, Harbaugh did make a good decision. Um, initially, in real time, I was thinking, like, why? Uh, I was thinking, why didn't they just let the Bills score? Because, again, we just talked about they had two timeouts left. So they were not in good position as far as stopping the clock. So since you can't stop the clock, the wise thing to do, let the Bills score. Escort them into the end zone. So you can give Lamar Jackson and the Ravens offense the most time that they can possibly get to try to make this happen, to try to score. Uh, and tie the game and go to overtime. But this way it got very tricky. You saw um, the Bills running back. I don't know if it was Singletary or who it was. Bills running back, he was running. And all these Ravens players, they like, hey, go. Do your thing. Go. Go ahead. Pass us up. Bye. See ya. But number 99, Adafi away. He came through. And he made the tackle. Apparently, he was trying to strip the ball, but he made the tackle at the one or two yard line. And that officially ended the game. I mean, we saw Marcus Peters, his frustration, um, his frustration uh, at at John Harbaugh. Um, There was somebody uh, on Twitter, so I don't know how true it was or not, somebody that said that they were at the game. And they watched Marcus Peters run uh, all uh, up and down the sideline to Harbaugh, uh, yelling at him, saying, why why didn't we take the points? Why didn't you just take the points? Don't know if that's true or not. I could see it being true, but saying, why why didn't you just take the points? Then let us play defense. So who knows? Um, But Marcus Peters was clearly heated uh, with that sequence of events. Exactly what he was heated at? Hey, who knows? Oh, uh, and one of my guys was like, maybe he was heated at uh, Adafi away, but him taking it out on John Harbaugh, that was a safer person to take it out on. I was like, well, yeah, Adafi away like this big giant. And John Harbaugh just this wee little man. So, but no, nah, I, um, I don't know, man. Who knows? But, um, yeah, Adafi away, that was a big, big, huge mistake, man. Huge mistake. And it's crazy because Adafi Away um, had one, probably one of his most impactful games this year. Yeah, his most impactful game this year. Because he forced a fumble early on on uh, Singletary, I think. And I guess he was feeling like, hey, I, for- I forced a fumble earlier. Let me just run it back. But it just, oh, man, that, that, that ended the game. Um, and then he even got the sack uh, with Josh Allen. I forgot who calls pressure. And Josh Allen was like, he ain't seeing Adafi away. Just reached out that hand. Josh Allen went right into him. Boom, sack. It's like, all right, let's go. And Adafi away was on the ground, and then he got that sack. So he had a very impactful game, um, or his most impactful game. Uh, and he did miss some plays, too. There was another sack that he missed uh, late in the game uh, where he had a couple times to get Josh Allen. And we know Josh Allen, he nice. He nice. So he, he does a good job evading pressure. 
But Adafi Awe had a... They were just big missed opportunities this game for the Ravens all around. All around. Um, since I guess we're talking about defense right now. The defense is like, it's, it's crazy because we always talk about how it's a game of inches. And every single play matters that much more. Every, especially in a close game. Oof, the defense in this game. Started off great. First drive. Josh Allen, what, his second pass. Interception. Marlon Humphrey, right place, right time. Interception. He looked super tired running it back. It was so weird. I thought he was going to tip over and, like, fall. But um, he, he, he caught the interception. It's like, all right, Marlon. All right, let's go, Hump. Let's get it, baby. That set the offense up um, for uh, and not an easy touchdown, but they was in short field position. And then they G roll was like, oh, these boys, they like that shovel pass, huh? Watch this. Shovel pass. J.K. Dobbins, let's get it. Touchdown. I was like, all right, let's go. There we go. Um, then later on, again, yeah, a uh, uh, fair away, he forced a fumble. Um, he forced a fumble. Uh, Ravens got the ball back again. J.K. Dobbins, he ended up getting a touchdown. Then the Ravens, they ended up getting a field goal later on. So early on, hey, the, the offense was starting off the right way. They even at one point had a 22-3 lead. That defense was doing their thing. And um, then just slowly, everything started falling apart. And you just know that, um, again, the Bills were like, and again, that I, I think one, the, the, one of the biggest moments was the non-pass interference call. That was huge. That was so huge. Um, where they didn't call pass interference on the Bills when it was a clear pass interference. Because it, it was a big momentum shifter. Big momentum shifter. Um, but with the, uh, the Ravens' defense, like, this is Josh Allen and the Bills. And if you look at the numbers, like, and even if the, the final score, you hold the, Bill, the Bills to 23 points, the Bills, oh, man, yeah, you, you should be good to go. The Bills, that passing attack, they got the, I think they got the number one passing team in the league. They held Josh Allen 19 for 36 for 19 to 36 for 213 yards. One touchdown, one pick. He averaged 5.9 yards a pass, a completion. 5.9 yards, man. Like, and then you would think, like, going into this game, say, like, hey, Stephon Diggs, man. Oh boy. Hey, because a lot of us was thinking, oh, Steph, like last Devontae Parker went off, six for 150. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, them boys went off. They both had like 500 yards each. A lot of us were thinking, oh boy, we got Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis coming to. Here we go. Here it comes. No. Ravens said, no. You're not going to beat us with those guys. Stephon Diggs had four catches for 62 yards. Stephon Diggs, one of the best receivers in the league, four catches for 62 yards. Devin Singletary was their next highest catcher, four catches for 47 yards. Dawson Knox, three for 40. Uh, Shakir, who came in the game after, uh, I think, who got knocked out? Was it Gabe Davis that got knocked out of the game? I forgot. Somebody got knocked out of the game. But he came in. He, he had two catches for 23 yards. That slot receiver, Isaiah McKenzie, he had four for 21 uh, and a touchdown. Now, on his touchdown, please watch the replay. I think it was Dawson Knox. It was definitely a tight end. It was clear offensive pass interference. But it didn't get called. Clear offensive pass interference, but it did not get called, baby. Again, we, we not want to complain about the refs, but when it's blatant, it was blatant yesterday. It was, it was really bad yesterday. Please watch the replay if you don't know what I'm talking about. Because initially, live, I didn't see it. I didn't see it live. But then I watched the, I watched the replay uh, of that play this morning. I was oh my goodness, yikes. What's going on here? Clear offensive PI. No call. No call. But guess where that happened? Guess what that happened after? That happened after um, a couple of plays before dropped interception. And this is what we talk about. When, when this an easy drop interception, the offense always gets a touchdown afterwards. Always. Even though it was a pass interference on it. But anyway. Um, Patrick Queen. Oof, Patrick Queen. Man. I feel for the guy because he's been struggling, man. Patrick Queen has been struggling because, again, like... Like what has been the story of Patrick Queen, um, he'll be right there around the play, right there around the play, but he's been struggling to finish. 
he's been struggling to finish. And that's 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 the that's so tough, man. Cause he's right there. He's so close. But it just missed. It just dropped like again, this dropped interception. That would have been huge, huge. Dropped interception. That ends the drive, gets the your offense the ball back. But he dropped it. He dropped it. Um, there was another play, I think the on a Josh Allen the scramble. Um, and Josh Allen, he was their leading rusher. <laughs> Sound familiar? Uh, but he had 11, 11 rushes for uh, 70 yards. So his, his, his average per rush was higher than his average per pass. So the Ravens defense, again, they, they did a good job yesterday overall. But it obviously wasn't enough. Um, but Josh Allen, on his touchdown, Patrick Queen, he was right there. And he just took a bad angle. He took a bad angle. And Josh Allen did the rest. So, it's, 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 I know it's, it's frustrating for us as fans, but I know for him as the actual player, he's in the games. So, it's got to be like way more frustrating for him because he, he's right there. He knows he's right there. But he just misses. Just misses. Um, so, it's... I don't know, man. It's um, I uh, I do. We said it during this all season that you could tell the Ravens they did not fully believe in Patrick Queen. This is not me saying it that I don't. This is not me saying that. No, the Ravens showed they showed on their end that they do not fully believe in Patrick Queen. Why? Because they brought Josh Bynes back again. Josh Bynes, who who's been playing for forever. Even played back in the Ravens. He was on the Ravens Super Bowl team in 2012. Josh Bynes has been playing for a while now. But they brought him back. But before they brought him back, the Ravens heavily, heavily pursued Bobby Wagner. Heavily. Even offered more guaranteed money than the Rams. So this is not coming from a fan's perspective. This is from the Ravens' perspective. The Ravens showed that they did not fully believe in Patrick Queen from their actions. So um, it's, it's, it's been tough. It's been tough for him. We keep saying we, just, we hope he turns it around because we do. We really do. Because, again, it's just, it's just a matter of finishing the place. If he starts finishing plays, oh, boy, the sky is the limit, man. But we'll see, man. So let's see. Um, Marlon Humphrey, good day, per usual. He's he's been doing his thing this year so far. Marlon Humphrey has been playing great football. Um, Marcus Peters, he did get beat. Uh, by Stephon Diggs. I remember there was just like third and seven, and Bill just ran a simple little inside slant. Stephon Diggs, he just beat Mar Mar Marcus Peters. Um. And we know Marcus Peters, he's more of a zone guy than a man guy. Marlon Humphrey's more of a man guy than a zone guy. Um, but, yeah, he got him. He got him. Uh, Marcus Peters overall had a good game. Kyle Hamilton, um, he was quiet this game. Chuck Clark, oof. Yeah, he had a rough one. He had a rough one. Uh, Marcus Williams, he, he had another almost pick. Oof, so close. Like he, It's like every game, man. He's always around the ball. Um... But there was one play where Stephon Diggs dropped a touchdown. He was wide open. He dropped a touchdown. When I watched it live, I saw Marcus Peters come in, like, hit Stephon Diggs a little late. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, let's go Marcus. I mean, Mark, not Marcus Peters, Marcus Williams. I was like, hey, that's, I said he'd be everywhere. That safety's everywhere. But then they showed the replay. Stephon Diggs just dropped it wide open. And then Marcus Williams came over a little after. <laughs> but anyway, man, um, the defense, they... They did their thing against the, the, the number one passing offense. Um, and then, but it's, they struggled against the run, though. Well, more so Josh Allen. Josh Allen taking off. That was their biggest thing. Because um, the, the Singletary had 11 for 49. He averaged four and a half yards a carry, which is straight. But he had a, a big chunk play at 18 yards. So that kind of boosted his numbers up a lot. Uh, and then Moss had three for six. Um and then his longest was five. So he had two rushes that got him a yard. Um, but anyway, 
Uh, Josh Allen, when he would take off, oh, it, it was tough because what can you do about that? What can you do about that? You could have everything. And, and obviously, looking at the numbers, they had everything covered well. They had everything covered well. But Josh Allen took off, and it's like, what, what can you do? What can you do? Um, pass rush. Terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. It was terrible. We did get a... Uh, I feel like he's got that long sack, but pass rush was terrible. Justin Houston, please. I don't know. Again, the deer antler spray. We've been talking about the deer antler spray. Please spray it. Help your groin heal fast, please. Tyus Bowser. I, I hope Tyus Bowser is healthy. Ravens need all the help that they can get with the pass rush. The pass rush is so bad. It is so bad. Mm, it's really bad. Um, so, yeah. Josh Bynes, he had an injury yesterday. He came out the game. I'm not sure what his status is. Uh, I guess we'll find that out today in the press conference. Um, but yeah, the pass rush is just, it's it bad. It's bad. So, that was that. Um, and yeah, I guess that, that, that pretty much sums up the defense. Uh, trying to think if I missed anything. I don't think so, but that was that. So now the offense. The Ravens offense. Uh, we talked about them briefly. And again, they 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 started off they started off hot. Um, again, the defense set them up nice. Great field position after the Marlon Humphrey pick. Um, Lamar in the offense. They went down the field again. The shovel pass for the touchdown. Then the next drive, they got J.K. got the rushing touchdown. They were moving, but we talked about the the referee stuff. We talked about the officiating, so we don't need to talk about that no more. But Ravens, Ravens, a lot of times, they also like being their own worst enemy. Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman. Who is projected to be Ravens' number one receiver. The drops. The drops. We talk about the drops. We've talked about the drops with Bateman. Um, and we always talk about, if you're going to drop the ball, okay. Because drops happen. We get it. And it was raining yesterday. Um, but if you're going to drop, you, you got you to gotta make up for it. You got you to gotta make more plays than you miss. It's, that's, that's so important to make more plays than you miss. Yesterday, he missed more than he made. Uh, and then he got hurt on top of that. So who knows how long he's going to be out for. I'm sure we'll hear something about that in the press later today, too. Um, but, yeah, he, the, the drops, he dropped. Can't drop like that, man. And it was like simple. Like one one drop, I think somebody said on there was one pass that he dropped where he slipped. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I I want to say that was a third down. But um anyway, there was a third down. Ran a slant across the middle of the field. He was wide open. It was first down. He had he had the yak to get a first down and more. Lamar hit him, hit him in stride, perfect pass, perfect throw. He dropped it. He just dropped it. He dropped it. Um, so then he, he ended up being on the sideline for the rest of the game. Uh, then he was in the walking boot after the game. So that's never good. Uh, so let's see. Um, then Devin DuVernay. Uh, I know a lot of people were talking about what the Rashad Bateman drops. They were like, hey, it's raining, it's raining, it's raining. Devin DuVernay ain't dropped. He ain't dropped the ball. So um, anyway, uh, Bateman did have three catches for 17 yards, um, but so did Pat Ricard. That matched Pat Ricard's numbers. Pat Ricard caught the screen pass. That went for a nice little chunk. Uh, he caught another pass where Lamar looked like he was going to get sacked. I was, I was for sure that was a sack, but Lamar like flicked it to Pat Ricard. He caught it, uh, and I don't remember the third pass. Um, Devin DuVernay, he went four for 51. Um, it is so important. The Bills showed it uh, last week showed it against the Patriots. It's, it's very important that the, um, the receivers get involved more. And I don't know if it's a mix of is stuff being designed for them, um, them getting open. Uh, for Bateman, it's a matter of just making catches because uh, he'd been getting some targets, but he, he, does, he, does, he got his drops. He got his drops. Uh, Duvernay, um, he don't drop anything. Uh, but it's a matter of getting him more involved. Uh, because yesterday, the Bills, 
excellent defense and excellent game plan, the Bills were like, oh, we ain't worried about these Ravens receivers. We're going to take out Mark Andrews. We know what he can do. And even though a big catch of Mark Andrews got taken away by the refs, by that garbage passing, offensive pass interference call, um, the, uh, the Bills, they did a pretty good job of taking him away. Ravens' best target, um, he had two catches for 15 yards. Two catches for 15 yards. Now, Lamar. Lamar missed him. Mark Andrews hit a nice, he looked like he ran a little out route, then he went up. It's oof, open. Perfect route. Ooh, it was, it was filthy in a good way. Lamar Jackson missed him. Overthrow. Missed him. Can't miss those, man. I know you're not going to make every single throw, but mm, ooh, that's one that, oh, you need that. You needed that. Needed it bad. But yeah, Lamar missed him. Um, on, oh, and speaking of Lamar, on his first interception, I forgot who it was intended for, but Lamar just, he threw it way too low. That was all on Lamar. Both, both of these interceptions, well, the first interception was all, all on Lamar because he just threw it way too low. The second interception was on a little mix of people because there, there was pressure, and, uh, but Lamar, he started backpedaling. So, hey, that's him too. It's a mix of him and the offensive line, but it's, it's him. He, he's to blame for that one as well. So these were two, two bad interceptions, um, two bad interceptions, but especially the first one. Because the first one, he threw it way too low, then that ball went way up in the air, and it's, uh, I was like, ah, here we go. <laughs> oh, and then they came down with it, Poya, uh, and I was like, oh, man, that sucked. That sucked. Um, but, yeah, man, I, um, one thing I'm wondering is uh, if Bateman is out, and this, this, this goes back to my argument all offseason, hey, let's add more. Let's add more for this Ravens offense because everybody, hey, everybody, hey, yeah, Rashad Bateman, Rashad Bateman. And, hey, I love Rashad Bateman. But another one of my thought processes is what, okay, what if he goes out? Then what? What happens? Because, I, and, I, and I said it too, during this all offseason, I said you don't, you don't want to think about these things. You don't want to think about that, but you have to, especially based off of last season. Last season, Ravens lost everybody. So thinking of backup plans, insurance policies, it, based off of injury, you got to think about those things. And, and you, 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 you want to take care of stuff ahead of time rather than after the fact. But the Ravens are like, no, no, Bateman, DuVernay, Prochet. Then they end up getting Demarcus Robinson. Okay, let's get it. Let's see what these guys got. But now, babe, we'll see what Bateman, we'll see. Um, again, today with the presser, we'll see what they say. And then, of course, um, if they don't say much in the presser, then we'll start seeing on Wednesday at practice, if he starts practicing or not. Right now, I'm not expecting it. If he's in the walking boot, I'm expecting him out at least a couple weeks. Because I would think that that would probably be like a, a, a low ankle sprain, something like that, and that could keep you out a couple of weeks. But hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully it's just the walking boot was just extra precautious, and extra safe. But we'll see. Because I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, Bills, they, they took Mark Andrews out the game, and they said, make somebody else beat us. Nobody else beat them. So, they did their thing. Uh, Russian offense, um, again, talked about Lamar, obviously leading Russia. Um, but J.K. Dobbins, uh, he continued to look better and better. Uh, but he had 13 rushes for 41 yards, averaged 3.2 yards a carry. So he couldn't really get jumping. He had a, it says his longest was 16 yards. Uh, Justice Hill, he's been doing his thing uh, when he gets his opportunity, and he needs more of an opportunity. Um, but he had uh, he had eight for 45, averaged 5.6 yards, um, and he's been explosive. But then he got hurt, and I remember initially when he got hurt, I was thinking, oh man, yeah, he's done for the season because of the way he went down. But then he got up, but then he was limping. I was like, oh man, here we go. So ho hopefully it's nothing long term with him, but. We'll see. Hopefully it was just cramps. Hopefully, cause but the thing that scared me was that he started. It, he made all them cuts and he was running. But then while he was running, he started like limping a little bit during the run. And I was like, oh man. So we'll see what the status is with him. Again, we'll find out later today in the presser. Um, what else? Uh, so yeah, man, that was um that was the Ravens game. Uh, everybody contributed. 
with the offense um, doesn't help when you don't score not a single point in 30 minutes. Doesn't help. Not a single point in 30 minutes. 30 minutes. It's not going to cut it. Not going to cut it. Um, because that's, that's points. That's points. The Ravens, they've, they've been getting off to these hot starts on offense. Hot starts. It's like, all right, hey, let's go, man. But then they kind of they kind of slow down, especially at the crib. They, they kind of slow down. Second half, they slow down. I think second half in the Dolphins game, what, they scored three, I think. Something like that. But Well, no, maybe it was just the fourth quarter they scored three. I forget. But it's not going to cut it, man. These teams, they can get hot at any second. And that allows them to creep back in. And, again, there were some other things that were contributing factors, but offense scoring zero points in the second half, that's, that's no good. It's no good at all. So, we'll see what happens with these Ravens, man. Um, they uh, clearly uh, have plenty to work on. Um, but the good thing is that they're 2-2. Two two. So, it's not like this is week 16 or 17 or 18, anything, anything like that. It's like, oh, man, Ravens still going to. Hopefully. Hopefully, they will start fixing stuff. Hopefully. Decision-making. Uh, execution, blocking, um, just everything. Hopefully they will start fixing stuff. Because it wasn't all bad yesterday. But the bad certainly outweighed the good. Um, so, that was that. Uh, so, shout out to the Bills. Um, these dudes, like, man. And, and I was saying, too. Um, the Bills did a little video with Omar's whistle. Um, then I, I remember during the live stream... Lamar threw a pass. I think it was for Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews kind of went for it, but it, the ball got tipped up in the air, and Devin Duvernay came down with it. And I was like, ooh, okay, Duv. And I was like, after that, y'all, 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 there's no way y'all can lose. I said, y'all, y'all not allowed to lose after, after Duvernay made a play like, oh, it was on the Lamar where Lamar, uh, it was supposed to be a sack. He got sacked by two people. But Lamar broke off of both of them, stayed up, scrambled, then threw the ball. It was supposed to be a sack. But it wasn't. And then Duvernay, for him to come down with that catch, that tip, tip toe catch on the sideline, the tip drill catch on the side. I said, oh, man, after, after that, y'all cannot lose this game, man. You're not allowed. But the Ravens said, yes, we are. We're allowed to lose this game. And we're going to show you. Anyway, Team Keep It Clean, appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we out.